Welcome to Kojo Recaps. Today, I'm going to explain to you a 1994 U.S. action-adventure film called The Shadow. Based around a legendary crime-fighting superhero who sets out to save the fate of the world. Be sure and like to share the love. In Tibet, following the First World War, an American named Lamont Cranston sets himself up as a warlord and opium kingpin under the alias of Ying Ko, which is Mandarin Chinese for Dark Eagle. In Tibet, the Tolku, a holy man who exhibits otherworldly powers and knows Cranston's true identity, abducts Cranston and offers him a chance to become a force for good and redeem himself. But Cranston arrogantly refuses at first, when he is attacked and silenced by the Tolku's purba, a mystical flying dagger. Ultimately, Cranston remains under the tutelage of the Tolku and becomes the Tolku's student for seven years. In addition to undergoing physical rigorous training, he learns mind control abilities such as hypnotism, mind reading, telekinesis, and the ability to bend people's perceptions so that he becomes invisible, save for his shadow. After completing his training, Cranston returns to New York City seven years later and resumes his former life as a lazy, laid-back, and wealthy playboy while secretly operating as The Shadow, a vigilante who terrorizes the city's underworld. He recruits some of those he saves from criminals to act as his agents, providing him with information and specialist knowledge. His most trusted agent is Mo, a taxi driver who, after being saved by The Shadow, has dedicated himself to assist him in any way he can. Most notably acting is Cranston's chauffeur, driving him anywhere and attending to him anytime he calls. He alone knows the true identity of the Shadow. His identity is also known by his uncle, Police Captain Wainwright Barth, who provides him with information and insights about police affairs, unable to imagine that his lazy nephew could ever be the Shadow. Cranston regularly hypnotizes him in order to keep the police from interfering with his activities. Cranston's secret identity is in danger upon meeting Margot Lane, a socialite who also has strong telepathic powers, although she has no control over them. For some reason, Cranston is unable to shield his mind from her, and she's able to read him with ease, something that scares him more than he is ready to admit. Meanwhile, Shuan Khan, a powerful rogue protege of the Tolku, arrives in New York inside Genghis Khan's sarcophagus. Upon his arrival to the city, Khan uses hypnosis to make a security guard shoot himself and makes a taxi driver crash his car directly into a fuel truck. As Khan's last descendant, Shiwan plans to fulfill his ancestors' ambitions of world domination. Khan immediately finds Cranston's secret lair and reveals that he was also a disciple of the Tolku. He proposes an alliance to Cranston after revealing that he is a true fan of his Ying Ko persona but Cranston immediately refuses the offer. Khan leaves, offering Cranston time to think about his proposition. After acquiring a rare coin from Khan, Cranston learns that it is made of bronzium, a metal that could be used for nuclear fission, and that Margot's father, Reinhard, a scientist working on energy research for the War Department, has become uncharacteristically reclusive, aloof, and can now speak Chinese. Cranston deduces that Khan has compelled Reinhardt to create an atomic bomb and makes his way to the Federal Building while changing into the Shadow. Unfortunately, he fails to stop Khan's henchmen from taking possession of the device and Reinhardt in the process. Khan then further hypnotizes Margot and commands her to kill the Shadow. She goes to Cranston's home and shoots him, not realizing she was shooting at a mirror. Cranston breaks Khan's hypnotic hold on her but she learns his secret identity and remembers exactly why she had come to his house. She accurately deduces that she was sent to kill the Shadow, and she instinctively went to Cranston's home, and at this she concluded that he is in fact the Shadow. Cranston asks her to leave before leaving the house as well. Cranston follows one of Khan's men, and he leads to Khan having a meal at a restaurant. Cranston confronts Khan about the murder attempt, and confirms that he would not be an ally in Khan's plans. Khan then reveals to Cranston that he is in possession of the Purba 
and used it to kill the Tolku. Both men draw out their guns and aim at each other. They shoot simultaneously, but their bullets hit each other in mid-air. Khan escapes and Cranston goes after him, but loses him near a vacant lot. The next day, Cranston gets his knowledge that Khan's atomic bomb would require a beryllium sphere to be completed and that Reinhardt's assistant seems to have already built one. Cranston confronts Farley Claymore, who is Reinhardt's assistant, who reveals his allegiance to Khan and tries to drown the shadow by locking him inside a giant water tank. Cranston contacts Margot telepathically and she is able to save him. Cranston, who is already exhausted and weakened, spends the next few days bedridden and recuperating while Margot takes care of him. With her natural telepath abilities, she is able to see some of his weird dreams and nightmares, including his warring days as Ying Ko and the horrible things he'd done and crimes he committed under the name. The Shadow eventually discovers Khan's location, the luxurious Hotel Monolith, a building that Khan has rendered forgotten and invisible to the city's inhabitants that was in the vacant lot that Khan had entered. The hotel went bankrupt before it was ever open and was ordered for demolition, although no one knows where, when, or by whom the demolition was completed. Cranston realizes the hotel is still there, but Khan had hypnotized the whole city into forgetting its entire existence. As soon as he realizes this, he is able to see the hotel. That night, with the knowledge that Reinhardt had completed the bomb under Khan's hypnotic control, the Shadow enters the hotel for a showdown with Khan. He fights his way through the building and hypnotically influences Claymore to jump to his death from a balcony. He finds Khan but is restricted and subdued by the Purba and a revolving floor. During his struggle with the Purba, he realizes that only a calm and peaceful mind can truly control the mystical object. By letting go of his fears and anger, he is able to seize control of the Purba and launches it into Khan's torso, creating a lapse in Khan's hypnotic control that frees Reinhardt and restores the hotel's visibility to the rest of the world. Cranston pushes Khan into the bowels of the building. At the same time, Margot and her father are trying to disarm the bomb. Khan tries to hold the shadow in a labyrinth of mirrors, but to Khan's surprise, the shadow is able to concentrate and shatter all the mirrors around them. The shadow then defeats Khan by hurling a sharp shard of mirror into his frontal lobe. Khan survives the battle, but awakens confused in the padded cell of a mental hospital. One of the doctors visits him, and he tries to hypnotize him, but fails, and this confuses him even more. The doctor, who is one of the shadow's agents, tells Khan that they were able to save his life by removing a part of his brain, which in turn nullified Khan's psychic abilities. In other words, that part of the brain was totally useless, unless you believe in psychic abilities. Khan is left powerless and weak in his cell. Cranston and Margot begin a romantic relationship and join forces to fight the criminal underworld. What did you think of the Shadow? Would you like to have psychic abilities? Tell us in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more recaps. And tell us which movie you would like to see us recap next. Until next time, dear viewer.